There was one time when Reuben, playing Macbeth, started flipping a stool and the sound of it, the knocking against your head, it felt like a physical manifestation of what was going on within him that then spiraled into him tipping up the place. As an actor, use what's in front of you. Never lose the sense of creativity, curiosity and imagination. Lizzie Mannering, Assistant Director, Macbeth, RSC, 2023. The following physical and writing activity allows students to explore the unsettling world the characters are in through the methods our movement director, Julia Cheng, used in rehearsal. It is best suited to a large hall or clear classroom. You will need pens and paper. If possible, use a variety of music to inspire your students as they move. For example, film soundtracks, classical tracks, different tempos, moods, etc. Organize your students into pairs. Ask the pairs to face each other and place one palm against the palm of their partner. Challenge them without speaking to establish who is leading and who is following with a gentle push-pull between their palms. Invite your pairs to move around the room palm to palm without speaking or colliding with other pairs. Challenge them to swap who leads by following the elasticity of the push-pull. Alternatively, this activity can be done on the spot, using just palms or holding a length of material between them and exploring a smaller space in detail. Now get your students into groups of three. Ask them to repeat the exercise, but with one person using both hands, the other two using one hand. Can they find this push-pull movement as before? Is it harder with three people or easier? Again, this step can be done on the spot to explore the shifts of movement and leadership in detail. Next, organize your students into larger groups of eight to 10 and ask them to connect palm to palm. Some can use both hands so it's more of a group creature, not one long chain. Ask them to move as one creature, to find a fluidity, a smoothness as they try to cross the room. Challenge the creature with different ways of moving, such as getting as low as possible, dropping their center of gravity, responding to different tempos, fast and slow, nominating leaders to safely steer everyone across the room. Now ask your students to get back into pairs and travel across the space back to back, remaining in contact at all times. Repeat this with two pairs only, while the others move as fast as possible around the space without running. Encourage them to do this as safely as possible, remaining aware of each other. Alternatively, students can explore this without moving across the room by connecting with their partner through just their backs or with different parts of the body, shoulders, elbows or knees. Discuss how the different pairs felt being surrounded by this movement. Which words best describe these feelings? Ask your students to imagine they are a surviving soldier from Duncan's war. Give them five minutes to write their feelings down about the battle they have just fought in. Encourage them to use their senses to inform their writing. What did they smell, hear, feel, see? Ask your students to swap paragraphs with someone else and invite volunteers to read out each other's work. Reflection point. Discuss as a whole group the meaning of shell shock and PTSD. What are the common symptoms? What could cause this type of experience? Are we more aware of this type of trauma today compared to in Shakespeare's time or even 50 years ago? Ask your students to research any written accounts of shell shock from war veterans and ask volunteers to share or read out any examples they find. Do they notice any common words or feelings used in these accounts? Does any imagery get used in the descriptions, such as animals, nature, the supernatural, 